Hi, welcome to Qubytes, your bite-sized pieces of quantum computing. My name is Rene from Valorum Reply, and today we're going to talk about the BMW Quantum Computing Challenge again, but this time a little bit more technical and with a focus on quantum machine learning circuits, which is a super interesting topic. And I'm very honored to have a special expert guest today, Anuj Doshi. Hi, Anuj, and welcome to the show. How are you today? Hi, I'm really well. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm doing fine, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's start with the typical introduction. So please tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your educational background, like what have you studied, like computer science, math, physics, that kind of stuff. So I did my undergraduate in mathematics, and then I went on to do a master's in theoretical physics. And I was always kind of interested in innovation and technology. And so throughout my entire university career, I was doing a lot of coding. And so coming into quantum computing, it was the perfect harmony between my math skills, my physics skills, and my computing skills. So to be honest, it was just the perfect field for me to go into. And so after doing a module in quantum information theory back at uni, I then just carried on learning and here we are doing quantum computing. Awesome. Well, that's, that's nice to hear. Um, let's dive into our today's topic. In season four, episode eight, uh, we talked with your colleague, uh, Marine Pigneur, who took part uh, with you and other uh, colleagues of Reply at the BMW Quantum Computing Challenge, right? And um, a, lot, a lot of things were learned already in the episode when I talked with Marine and she explained the QML, like quantum machine learning really well and the hybrid approach and why that actually works so well, because this was always a kind of a question, right? Why does this hybrid approach with a quantum layer inside of a neural network work so well? And so I, I understood that really, really, really well. Uh, but at the time we were talking, the project was still ongoing. And mm -hmm. so maybe you can give our audience, first of all, a refresh. What was the project about mm -hmm. um, so that everyone is on the same page? And then also, yeah. um, what was the final result? Um, so the, the project was using quantum machine learning. And like you said, it's a hybrid architecture. So there was a classical layer and then a quantum layer. And we had to use this for image recognition in the quality assurance line. So identifying defective doors or cracks in some of the parts and things. So that way, when, when they scan these parts as they come through, we'll be able to pick up on the ones that are defective and take them out of the line. Uh, overall, the challenge was really enjoyable. You know, I was working with some really smart, talented people. And the outcome of that, we, we didn't managed to win, but I think they're interested in having us back and they're, they're really interested in the work that we did. So I think at some point in the future, there's talk of a, another conference maybe. So fingers crossed. Nice. Uh, but you should also say, I actually heard it from another colleague, that you made it to the finalist round, right? So that yeah. is quite an achievement already. And so, yeah, congrats on that. And like you said, a lot of Thanks. things were came out of that also from from the knowledge, right? Like learning yeah. a lot and, you know, gaining a lot of new knowledge and experiences and, and all of it. And uh, I mean, getting to the finalist of such a challenge with that many uh, participants and so on is definitely quite an achievement. So first of all, congrats to you and the whole team. That was Thank you. Thank you. great, great stuff. And so we already touched a little bit on the uh, on the circuits in the intro. So let's talk a little bit more about the, the quantum machine learning circuits. And yeah. uh, tell us, please, why is the design of these uh, quantum circuits so important um, yeah. that you design them correctly and using the right methodologies? And uh, what have you found out during the challenge? What is your learning there? Yeah, so when I first started with the challenge, we were kind of using a circuit in literature, which was kind of well-defined. It was a standard general circuit, um, which I think is denoted by HEA. Um, so it's just the way that the circuit's kind of designed. And The reason we use the circuit is because it's it's just generally quite good in the literature. There's no like mathematical like oh this is the perfect circuit design. Whereas I think something like something like NLP where we use machine learning to process natural language and it's a complete quantum circuit. I think Alessandro touched on this in the early episode where you can actually encode the grammatical structures inside of these kind of quantum circuits. Mm -hmm. The problem is with you got this hybrid architecture is it goes through this classical layer and it almost jumbles up all of the useful information. Mm -hmm. So when we're designing the circuits, it's hard to get like a real understanding of the structure of the data that you're getting in because it's kind of been yeah. through an entire classical network. So when we design circuits in the literature, there are two kind of really important things. One is expressibility, which is, the, is defined to be the circuit's ability to generate states 
that are well representative in the Hilbert space. So it just it, for simply simply put, it's kind of how many different ways can the circuit represent the data? Mm-hmm. So if there's like high expressibility, uh, will be like can be a more interesting function. So like if you have like different data points and you've got to curve fit it, it's using a Taylor series up to x set to the seven, mm-hmm. or using just up to the x squared. So the lower expressibility, the more generalizable, but the less detailed. So there's this kind of trade-off between how expressible you want your circuit to be. The second is entanglement. And we try to measure how much potential each state has to be entangled with one another. And the key reason for this is, in all the literature, having higher levels of entanglement means far better like machine learning circuits. Mm -hmm. So increased entanglement is always good. However, then there's another problem. When we have higher entanglement, it normally means we need longer depth of circuit. Now, the longer depth we have with our devices that we have today, the more noisy it becomes. And yeah. so, you know, we we have to almost put a limit on our entanglement as well. So there's a lot of different problems here that we've got to try and optimize around. And yes, we use like maybe a few different circuits specifically. And so my job uh, during the challenge was I was experimenting with a lot of different circuits, a lot of different number of qubits, and all these other things to kind of see what would happen. Right. And so with, with this qubits that we found, we realized that there was kind of, so with the circuits that we used, there were a couple of other problems that kind of came up. One is the expressibility saturation problem. So as we add um, more complexity and more expressibility, it and as we do the, the machine learning, it kind of reaches a natural limit, which is almost independent completely of the previous, like the uh, actual expressibility or the entanglement. So there's like another value that we had to look at because we needed that to be as high as possible, but you couldn't really find that out until you ran the circuit. The other problem that we ran into was the barren plateau problem. Mm -hmm. And I think Maureen touched on this briefly because she said, we only needed six qubits. The problem is when we have more qubits and we do the gradient descent function, it almost turns into zero instantly. So it doesn't learn anything when we have enough qubits. The function just becomes like, oh, we don't know where to go. So we're just going to stay where we are. So that's another kind of problem with the conventional fixed circuits. Gotcha. And so what you mentioned is like these fixed circuits probably don't, are not the good or the right solution for the problem in this part, or they seem to be problematic basically, right? And so what what are some of the alternative approaches you could choose or that you explored? Yeah, so, I mean, going away from the fixed circuits or the circuits in literature um, is still like an open problem. There's not a perfect answer. And it's one of the most interesting problems, in my opinion, in the quantum machine learning space. However, one of the most interesting ones that I found uh, was the variable ANSATS algorithm. Now, the way this works is you have you start off with a certain circuit, and the idea is to kind of try and travel across your hyperspace of all the circuits Mm-hmm. and try to move in a direction, almost like another a super gradient descent on your entire circuit architecture to find the best circuit. So the way that that works is you take one step where you try and add a certain gate or a certain entanglement or a certain feature. And then it compares both of those circuits. And if it decides that it's improved your model, if it decides it's improved via expressibility entanglement or just the general cost function, it will adopt that change. Mm-hmm. Then what's really interesting about this one is it then does a simplicity step. So it will then try to remove a random part of the circuit. So, so kind of like with convolution neural networks, when we remove a certain neural, your neuron, yeah. we remove certain gates. And so this allows it to, what I was talking about earlier with the circuit depth, allows it to retain a small circuit depth, where it's still optimizing all the other factors. Yeah. And they have shown that this does actually help. We can get similarly optimized solutions, but with lower circuit depths, which means lower noise, and yeah, more interesting solutions. Wow. So you're basically using a circuit to optimize itself dynamically during, or optimize the whole thing dynamically kind of, right? Yeah, it's almost like, like using machine learning to figure out the best circuit. It's almost like, you, you know, AutoML, right? The auto machine learning where they're yeah. exploring like different machine learning algorithms and basically try to pick the best one for your current problem based on the data you give and all of that stuff. So it's, it could be, well, it's not, of course, not the same thing, but similar something like this? Yeah, it's very similar, I would say. Um, like you are trying to figure out the best machine learning algorithm. 
So in a classical sense, instead of using, say, the sigmoid function, yep, if you yep. want to use a whole bunch of different activation functions, mm -hmm. you're essentially testing across that space. That's essentially what you're doing here. Super cool. Well, that is that is really impressive. And like you said, this is like this is folks, this is state of the art research, right? Like this is an, an unsolved problem that Anuch and friends are basically tackling at the moment. And uh, yeah, looking looking forward to learn more. Um, and yeah. yeah, we could talk for many more hours about these things. It's <laughs> super fascinating because again, this is bleeding edge stuff, folks. Um, but we're already at the end of the show. Uh, thank you so much, Anuj, for joining us today and, and sharing your insights. That was very much appreciated. It was really good. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Well, and thanks everyone for joining us for yet another episode of Qubytes, your bite-sized pieces of quantum computing. Uh, please watch our blog and follow our social media channels if you want to hear more about the upcoming episodes. And of course, you can find all the episodes from season one to five now all on our website. Until then, take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.